looks at James Dean going through. That's just what's happened so far. Yeah, so, so far in top 16, we have three contenders and we have three one more times to go back over. I mean, we talk about it being the... Well, you know what, actually, before I even get into the statistics, let's get yeah. into Becky. She's with Dragos Shipke. Big hit, Becky. Is he OK? Dragos, first question to you. We want to know, are you OK? Yeah, yeah, I am OK. It's always great. Whenever I see your face after any incident, you're at least smiling. But I can imagine right now you're thinking, oh, my goodness, my car. We yeah. saw the way the rear tires kind of came up on the curb, and then it just lost all front end steering. Can you explain to us what that was yeah, like? Yeah. When uh, the start line, when we go to the first corner, I have, have I start in the fourth gear, but uh, I have problem with because the third gear. I clutch, and I have uh, the fourth gear, but uh, we have problem and. The second time I uh, want uh, uh, want uh, the to the yeah for the game for four gear and I was in the corner and this is difficult for 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 Kari and for me and this is my yeah. <laughs> I see. With looking at the damage from you know the car, can you imagine if you'll be able to get it back on track for tomorrow? Yes, of course. Tomorrow will be in full condition. Yeah, it's no problem. We rebuilt. And there is the trademark, trademark dry gorge, hip key smile. Yes, of course, we will be back tomorrow. Back to you guys. Look at that <laughs> nod of approval. Not, I'll be not, back tomorrow. It wasn't even a question yeah. that needed asking. You can go he, into he, your local crash repair centre and say, look, I actually was watching this thing. A guy smashed the whole front of his car. The very next day it was fixed. So, you know. Pull up your socks. Pull up your socks, yeah. So Higby, I mean, look, he's all smiles. He's, he's a showman. You know, he's a guy that likes to put on a show for the fans. He's one of the most exciting drivers on the grid. But he's going to be hurting from that. He's, one, he's going to feel it in the morning. It's a big hit. And secondly, they're going to be up all night now trying to put that car back together for round four. Again, that's the nice part of this double header format is that they can have a hit like that and say, you know what, this was a bit of a disaster day. Let's reset, go back and get some revenge tomorrow. But Hipke allowing Shanahan to move through, Connor Shanahan moving through to the top 16. So from a championship perspective right now, and we have to be very open and honest here and say that we may have a champion by the end of this weekend if the point system works out the way it could, because you're doing four rounds in two weekends. So look, the likes of the Shanahans are looking at this going, you know, in the top five saying, well, we can't afford to slip up at any point here. So they're both clear into top 16. We now see Kevin Piscalti warming up his tires. He's had a couple of incidents in, and a couple of engine problems in practice as well. This has been a war of attrition for a lot of these drivers. It's the toughest, you know, event because it's a long distance away for everybody. You've got the hardest track with the most amount of throttle of any circuit I've seen in Europe, which means the cars are getting hot, they're getting battered. And then you've got concrete walls everywhere. One mistake and your car is destroyed. And these two guys rolling up to the line now are going to be thinking, you know, nobody's got past the first corner here in the last two battles. Yeah, can we get through it or is it going to be a one more time? That's what they're asking themselves. Right on the line now is Laurie Heinen, an, an unknown entity in the Driftmasters European Championship, made his way in to qualifying yesterday in this incredible NASCAR powered V8 S13. He takes on Kevin Piscotti, who in Austria, you know, shone a little bit of light on the situation and showed us who he is, but now he takes on a heavy contender who in practice looks incredibly strong. Heinen and now through the gears down, you can see Piscotti, the old ball, fourth gear clicked onto the back bumper he goes Laurie Heinen wanders in and out of outside zone one now settles himself settles the nerves but Kevin Piscol he goes for the back bumper and gets himself trapped up has to straighten reinitiate into outside zone four now Piscol he finds himself back into it Laurie Heinen and looks for outside zone dials on a lot of angles but it's put to floor and Piscol he finds himself once again back on the inside of the circuit nowhere near the back end of Heinen and S13. Heinen's car sounds like a Formula One car it's like a V10 screaming. I know it's a V8, but it revs to 9,500 RPM. It sounds incredible. And, you know, he's a 2018 and 2020 Finnish champion. He comes here as an unknown, but he comes here with a lot of credentials. He comes here as someone that's from a very competitive part of the drift world. And um, Piscalti makes all the errors here in the chase. You can see he just transitions too snappy, too early, and finding himself having to back out to avoid going up on the grass. And from that point on, he's playing catch up. He's cutting the track. He's on the inside of the circuit. And obviously, you know, we're no uh, mathematicians. Uh, or physics professors, but obviously if you're going the shortest route, you're getting faster all the time, but it is kind of cheating in terms of the way the judges are looking at it. You should be mimicking and following rather than cutting across. And I think Piscalti is going to get marked down quite considerably for that. But Heinehan, very strong first run. Now we got to see him in the chase position. We haven't watched a chase from Laurie Heinehan yet. Um, is he as good as they say he is? Well, we're about to find out. We certainly are, Dave. There we go. They're on the line, ready to rock and roll. The lights underneath the bonnet of Kevin Piscotti's car shining bright at the moment. He gives his thumbs up. Smoke still lingering in the cabin. Heavy breathing going on for Piscotti. He knows he's up against a heavy hitter, a big contender right now. They come down 
into the scoring zone. Fourth gear selected as Kevin Biscotti looks to make his mark on this championship. Goes wide, drops a wheel on the edge of the circuit. Laurie Heinen right with him. Now he doesn't make the same mistake. Let's Biscotti get wide. Now looks for the transition back as Biscotti gets himself into outside zone five down the back end of the circuit. But look at Laurie Heinen and jumps up onto the door of Kevin Biscotti's BMW, tags him, rubs him, pushes him and nudges him across the finish line, Dave. Wow. <laughs> From Laurie Heinen, he wasn't leaving any questions there. He was saying, uh, if anyone wants to question my proximity, on that last corner let me just <laughs> and then he smashed Kevin Piscotti's car about four times I thought he might have even been a little too aggressive he could have uh, you know spun around Piscotti there but Piscotti to be fair stays in it stays on throttle here again is the problem Piscotti's transition there looked too early and too tight on the inside of the course missed the outer zone Heinen just kind of rolls through the centre of the course we'll watch it just after that Heinen dives forward catches up to him and Heinen does all the work here on the last transition through the last outer zone loads of proximity not skipping the course and sparks flying from the back of the wow. Scotty's car. Look at that. Um, an exhaust in the ground maybe there, but it is a quite bumpy part of the track. We it noticed that is, when we yeah. were walking around earlier. Look at this. From the drone, you could see the aggression from Piscotti there as he was battering the side of Kevin. So here we have Heinehan. Uh, I think Heinehan's done enough, I think, for me. I know it's a big yeah. statement, but I think he's done enough in that one. And Laurie Heinehan, who making his debut as a wild card this weekend in Riga, goes through to the top 16. Well deserved. Kevin Piscotti will have a little rethink and try and come back out for round four a little stronger. I know they've had some engine issues with that car in practice. Let's hope all will be rectified tonight. They'll be a little bit stronger tomorrow. But Laurie.